welcome to uh, Sparks of History. Uh, we're pleased today to have um, renowned historian and author, uh, Adam Zamoyski. Um, Mr. Zamoyski, Adam, um, is a um, historian who has written extensively on the history of Poland, Russia, and, and France. Um, he has been uh, honored by many organizations and associations worldwide. Mr. Zamoyski is also a member of the advisory board of the Page of History Foundation dedicated to the memory of the banished Jewish communities in Poland since 1991. And it's a pleasure um, to have you here today. And today's topic is going to be focused on Napoleon and um, Mr. Zamoyski has written a number of uh, authoritative works um, on Napoleon, uh, including Moscow 1812, Napoleon's Fatal March on Mas Moscow, as well as Napoleon, the man behind the myth. So I'd like to start today um, a little bit about your background and how you got interested in these specific areas of history? Um, well, my background is, uh, personal background is that uh, um, I'm, I'm sort of typical of, of the, the, the Polish diaspora, I suppose. Uh, I was born in New York completely by chance because my mother had to be there to renew her DP papers after the war. Um, but I was brought up in, in London, um, but also uh, around Europe a lot. Um, and my parents uh, left Poland at the beginning of the war, my father with the Polish army, or what was left of it, and um, my mother as a refugee. Um, and um, a mixed background, my, my father was born before the First World War in right out in what is now Belarus um, and my mother was um, born in in the German partition of Poland uh, but also before the First World War so a lot of languages were spoken at home. Um, my father was a tremendous phylocemite he um, and so we, we, we always had um, um, at, at home, we had a, a, a lot of um, contact with um, parts of the Polish Jewish diaspora. And um, my father later, um, this, because he was a great horse expert, started um, the Arab breeding, Arab horse breeding in Israel um, and oh. visited several <laughs> times. So, um, <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, somehow, Palestine. Uh, Palestine. Yes. And um, I, um, I, you know, so I've, I've always felt, um, and, you know, that we were in our home, you know, there were, there were, um, there were all these, these Polish Jews who'd ended up in London in the diaspora and they were such wonderful jokers and they were colorful and intelligent. And I, um, so they were very much part of my, um, my life and, and, and opened up, I think, uh, you know, a more a slightly wicked sense of humor about history, um, which I think, I think that's where it comes from. Uh, because when I look at history and when I, as I do my research, and I think this is what differentiates me from a lot of historians, um, and what annoys me in them is that people regard historical figures as though they were in another dimension. Uh, you know, I read through um, this really brilliant and authoritative and in-depth, the absolutely um, definitive biography of Metternich that came out um, <clears throat> recently. Um, but the trouble is that the author treats Metternich as though he were a kind of different category of human being. Now, the point is that everybody we read about or study in history is just a man or a woman. 
and I'm sorry, they picked their noses, they farted and they belched like everybody else. They also made fools of themselves like everybody else. They tripped over, they knocked over things, um, they said stupid things, because where none of us are perfect. And I think this is where one, where I, I don't know, this is how I look at things and that's why, um, and I think this makes one, allows one to understand historical figures better if one does treat them without this reverence. So anyway, that's, that's my background and, um, and it's partly because of my irreverence, I suppose, that I've um, kept away from academia um, and, um, you know, and I have my differences with, with, with many, um, with many academics. Anyway, there, there we go. That's my okay. background. Okay. Thank you. What, what drew me to Napoleon was, again, well, partly because um, my publishers and, um, wanted me to write about that, but partly also because, and I wouldn't have agreed because there are so many books about Napoleon, um, had it not been for the fact that I thought, well, yes, I would really like to find out who this guy really was. You know, get away from La Grande Histoire by the French or the demonization of the Brits. Um, you know, the guy was just a guy. He was, um, and, you know, when you, when you un get close to him and you really begin to realize that he was a tremendously insecure, though brilliant man, um, that you begin to realize why he made the mistakes he made um, and why, you know, what spurred him on in many ways um, and what brought down his, uh, brought about his downfall. So I think that, that you know, one, one has to get under the skin and into the, into the minds of people rather than treat them like actors on a stage.